All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to continue our series. We are in for the very first time in a long time. We have nailed it in the commercial space. We are in a location that is amazing for production design. This is the ultimate cheat code for every cinematographer in the world. Have you got something interesting to shoot? Yes. Is it in an interesting location? Yes. Is that 90% of the work? Yes. Do you ever tell anyone? No. Right? You claim all of that as your own personal skill, what you bring to the project, when in fact it's mostly the director and the locations that they choose uh, and the story. But let's not talk about that, right? That's not how you get followers. That's not how we get more jobs. You claim everything for yourself. You don't give anybody else credit. So we're looking at work that I've already done. And if you like looking at work that I've already done and trying to figure out how we did it and some of the decisions that come up and the decisions that actually move the needle, you can do more of this over on Patreon, right? The link is in the description below. The only reason that I do these videos is because the Patreon support allows me to take time out to do them. So I appreciate the support. Hopefully you get a little bit of extra value. There's a Discord group. It's the hive mind of cinematography. Uh, there's a back catalog of thousands of hours of this stuff, right? So if you think this is a long video, uh, just imagine I've been doing this for 10 years. There's lots and lots of stuff to look at over there. Okay. Let's uh, start by looking at the storyboards, right? Now we know, I'm not going to say it again, I said it in the last few videos, this is a huge cheat. If you haven't seen the build-up to the other, uh, sorry, the other videos in this series, right? I think we've already done two on this particular job. Just to quickly recap, it'll be in the link in the description below as well. But we have, I think it's 50 shots over two days, probably eight or nine different setups that I'm thinking, so little scenes inside this uh, particular house that we are in. Uh, it's supposed to be dark, down, moody, it's a commercial about depression. We're shooting on the Mini LF. We're shooting uh, a black puppy in a really dark and depressing space. That's going to be hard because the thing is a black hole of light. We're going to talk about those challenges. And I think that's it, right? There's nothing else to add uh, except, yeah, if you want to see more of the backstory, go there. Okay, let's look at our storyboards, right? This is a huge cheat, but just imagine now, this is supposed to be nighttime, okay? And imagine that we are there on the location scout. This is the first time you'll, I'll, I, I saw the locations for the first time on the location scout. And you're looking at this location and it's like, okay, it doesn't really tell you much here. Uh, but just to give you an idea of the information that I would have going into the scout, we've got, and these are the final boards as opposed to the shot list, right? Unfortunately, don't have the shot list. What I have are the final boards. So it sort of gives you a cheat because you know exactly what we're thinking. But just to go over the story before we show you the actual location. Old mate is sitting here. He's on the sofa. Uh, he needs to clean up his life because he is depressed. That's a bummer. In comes a puppy, right? Who doesn't love a puppy? The puppy starts barking and we realize, oh, the puppy's on the other side of the room and he's barking at the dude. The dude is on the telephone. He gets a call from one of his buddies. Let's go party. He is not interested, right? Zero interest rates. That is the setup that we're going to be looking at today. Pretty simple. In fact, I think it was only four shots here. We ended up turning it into five. So now let's go to the location. And also today, guess what else I have? I have the references that the director sent through. This is a gold mine of to see how are we going to take this information that someone has given us, right? And we're going to translate it into actual images on the day. Let's take a look at the location and talk about what a dream this is. First of all, let's go to the wide shot. You will notice number one thing, well, the curtains and the shears are already there, right? This is Andre Sofhob's personal residence. This is the kind of residence that I would design if I was going to live in a house, right? But who lives in houses these days? Uh, white, Non-white walls, lots of interesting textures, curtains, shears. Uh, these things, right? Just random, like 1970s, 1960s. Let's just have stuff in the middle of the room and amazing carpet, right? Not like some white tile. We've got already got a wood table in there. There's lots of different elements. You start to see these things come together. This is a win, okay? So just location scout wise, when you walk in here, even if it doesn't really work for the setup, I, as a cinematographer, would be saying, this is the, yes, this is the place. Like we're going to make it work to this place because to build this place is not going to be possible. To find another house like this is not going to be possible. This is a rare gem in cinematography. We go to the other angle and we can see the other side of the room. This is just out a little door here. In fact, if you watched the, the first video in this series, there's a little hallway shot of a guy walking with a dog behind him. This is that hallway, okay? So this is that same room. Now, I know we're going to make it nighttime. This is a nighttime scene. So we need to be thinking about solutions, right? Because in a daytime scene, you'd be thinking, holy Lord, 
this is quite a footprint that we are going to have to light up. Quite a footprint means lots of gear, means lots of people, means uh, we're not going to have a lot of time to do this. So if we were going to have to do daytime, man, the schedule would really come into play. Because if we don't have enough people to make this thing look good, or we don't have the budget to make it look good, we're going to have to base everything off of the scene. Right? Because we're going to be looking out these giant windows, even with the shears, we're not going to want light on them. It's going to change everything. Nighttime, horse of a different color. Right? We can be a little bit more relaxed because I know we're not going to like pump in crazy hard moonlight. I've got the curtains and the shears already. I'm just going to tent out there, whatever it is. Can we tent it? That's the first question. Yes, we can. Okay, we're going to tent it. Right now, tenting is different than hard black. Hard black, you just put uh, the black directly on the windows. That's no good. Why? Because it kills all the depth. What do you want? Depth. Don't kill the depth, right? Be a depth lover. This is why when you tent, instead of going hard black against there, we build a little tent, right? We're in the circus. We're making pictures. You build a little tent around there, and then you can put a little bit of level out there. So we take our location information, and it's like, well, okay, we can put this gentleman who's going to be on the sofa, right? This sofa, we positioned it there, so we're sort of cheating. Sofa wasn't there originally, right? Different orientation inside of the room. You can actually see there's two sofas on the location scout. We could put these wherever. Do we want to put them over here? Do we want to put them uh, against this wall over here? What's the answer? No, you don't want to do any of that. Why? Because this particular angle has the most depth. We know the little puppy's going to be on the ground. Old mate's going to be on the sofa. We need to get them separated far enough so that the camera can get both of them in the frame. This sounds a lot easier than it actually is in practice. In practice, nightmare, All right? Especially when we're shooting 239. We're not shooting 4x3, we're shooting 239. So we need to get a lot of space between these two or else, holy lord, it's a big pen, or else we're going to have to be, like imagine that the puppy is going to be sitting here, right? And old mate is sitting on the sofa here. Uh, let's come around a little bit. Oops, oh, now they moved. Let's just, let's just clear that out of there. Let's go in a little bit to the left. Okay, puppy, old mate, uh, if we are right here with the camera, we're going to have to be on a 14 millimeter to get them both in. And then the problem is, old mate over here, who is the whole point of the ad, he looks like a little ant in the background. That's going to look horrendous. So we don't do that. So we want to be on the longest lens possible and still be in this room. Uh, other benefit is, well, we've got the curtains and shears to light from. Now you have to be thinking, nighttime interior, are we going to key from the outside? No, we have to key from the inside. Why? Because it would have to be a really bright full moon to key from the outside, even in a dark, down, depressing commercial. You'd have to be going for that uh, moonlit look, which we actually do, I think in the next video of this series, we're going to talk about how to do just moonlight inside. Maybe the hardest thing to do, the hardest look to get as a film crew is moonlit interior. I mean, you can make that thing so horrendous so fast. Anyway, this is different. This is, he's watching TV, or he's sitting on the sofa doing something. TV, huge, huge giveaway. Like anytime we can get him watching TV at night, boom, there's your answer for a key. Or what's more realistic is in a space like this, as you come wider, guess what else you can do? You can put 5,000 practicals in this frame. So let's just walk through, just looking at this. Where am I going to put prax in the frame? Well, I probably want something here, right? This is going to be a stand-up one because if old mate's sitting here on the sofa, this probably works as the key, right? Then again, it depends on what way he's looking. If he's looking over here, that's good. If he's looking this way, it's probably not good, right? Because I'm on this side of the line. Or sorry, I'm on the other side of the line. I don't want the key coming from the same side as the line, right? Because we know he has to look down at his phone. I'm going to put a prack in here, right? In between the two sofas. So now I have one prack there. I've got one prack here. It could be standing or it could be on a little desk over here. Uh, then in the foreground, I'm probably going to have another one side table with another prack here. Maybe we get one for in the background back there. Maybe we fake a shelf. Maybe we do something. Maybe we fake a prack here, like across the foreground. Those are the things that I'm thinking. I'm thinking how many practicals can we fit in? Because what's going to have to happen is if this is the frame, right? If this is our 239 frame, we're going to have to not see the whole room so that we can rig some lighting from inside because we're we're going to light up the curtains and shears that is not going to be the key that's just going to be for depth the key is going to have to come from inside the room so the question is do we key from what would be the tv that he's watching do we key from an overhead 
that is in the room? Do we have enough space to fit the overhead in the room? Are we going to key from the pracs? So if, if we have a prac here, what we would do is we would just clamp, you know, you put a little, uh, like a little four foot or two foot light mat and you key back that way, something in there, cross key. Like what is the solution that we're going to come up with? That's what we're going to look at now for the look that we're going to go for. You think, oh, well, surely the cinematographer is coming up with a look. Not really, right? The director sends you this stuff. What do they say? They say, they don't actually say this, but what it truly means when they send this through is, hey, make it look like this. If you make it look like this, I like this. And if I like it, guess what you get? You get more work as long as you're not a D-bag, right? If you make it look like this and they ask for it and you're a D-bag, you may not get more work, right? But if you're just a nice person and you're cheerful and you're constructive and you make the day go great and you can get their images, their locations to look like this, they got what they asked for. Now, maybe what they asked for sucks, right? Then you got to find different directors. But if what, what they asked for is cool and you also like it, I mean, this is my kind of stuff. I like it dark. I like it down. The first thing that you should be doing well, the first thing that I'm doing when I look at this is, okay, uh, what is like, if you blur your eyes, again, blur your eyes to the image, that immediately, that gets you like the Pareto principle of what is the most important thing here? Uh, what are we, what is the overwhelming feeling when you just blur your eyes? And it's, well, for me, these two, uh, besides the mood, like the dark and the downness of it and the softness of all the light and everything like that, is the color contrast, right? So we're going to go one prac, uh, key with something colder, key with something colder. This is TV. This is like an overhead. Uh, and then warm prax. Now, I already know the exact uh, Kelvin temperatures that I like on my camera and in the lights to get it to look like this. I can share it with you right now. You may not like that, right? Maybe yours is a different style. Personally, I like 3,900 on the camera. I like 43 on the moon and I like 29 on the prax. That's it. No special sauce, no nothing. That's my setup. 39, 43 on the moon. Uh, 29 on the, the prax. Okay. I don't like this is too much of one tone for me. This is too hot of a practical for me. This is just one tone, good shape on the lighting, but just one tone gets flatter. As soon as you start to add prax, now we've got interest. That's all I'm looking for. I'm not like, Oh, you know, this is going to be the exact frame or anything like that. It's just the general strokes of the brushes that are available to cinematographers. That's all you're looking for in something like this. Okay. Now let's actually go should we do the, well, we don't really need to do the, uh, we don't have to do the storyboards, right? Cause we're going to look at them all at the same time. What we can do is look at the widest shot, which is this one. Okay. So let's come down here first and we'll describe exactly what we're doing here. Okay. So this is the final storyboard that we end up on, right? You see dog, big dog, little person in the background. Remember what we talked about the lensing. We need to be far enough away. So that positions where the dog and the boy is going to be. And really this happens on the day of the tech scout. You walk it through, you look at Artemis stills, you say, okay, this is actually going to work this position, this orientation of the sofa. So for then for the lighting plan, this is all done ahead of time as well, right? You're like, okay, well, let's go from the TV. We can't see like the conversation has to come back. We cannot see up here. Okay. Like that's a huge no, no for this wide shot. So we have to get the dog physically closer. Why can't we see up there? I already told you <laughs> because we have to light from up here. We're going to light up the windows, but then we have to light from inside. And yes, maybe behind this wall. Uh, but remember this wall doesn't exist. It's like slats of things. So we can't even arm out something from over here, which means we can only key from the TV and the practicals as they are. No bueno, right? Not going to be good enough. So what do we do on the day? We say, I will eliminate you ceiling. Right? And what does that mean? That means we got prac. Oh, sorry. We've got tent out there. Another tent out there, right? The colors don't match. Nobody cares. Okay. We've got TV key, which is this light here. Then the most important thing, prac, prac. We added our little table. We nudged in the prac in just the right spot. We've got our faux prac over here. So this right there, that is not this. Nope. Don't make that mistake, right? Little tiny pools, little tiny pools of light. Now I will share a fun story with you. Uh, here when we were, when we were doing the, uh, 
talking about pre-production and talking about how we're going to light the thing and how we're going to make it look and going over some of the references. It's like, let's not do too much. Let's not, let's try and be as fast as we can be, uh, which is production speak for, man, we've got so much to shoot. We have to be really fast. Please don't make us late. Okay. So like make it as good as you can in the time that we have, but we are not going to be waiting on lighting or a grip or anything like that. We just have to keep moving. That's what's the most important. And of course me in pre-production, I say, of course, right? Like let's pare it all back. Let's tell, let's take it right back. And then I talk to the gaffer and I talk to the grip and I say, Hey, listen up. <laughs> we're going to have to be so fast because we're not just going to put in, you know, a, uh, one single lamp in here and be like, Oh yeah, it just looks good as is. No, we are going to cram as much stuff into this as we can because we have all the, like we, this is, this is what we do. This is why we have fun. So we're not just going to do like one TV gag and then we'll light up the shears and that'll be it. No, it's like, give me full control in all the packs. Give me full control of the shears. Give me overhead here. Give me the key from the prac, which is this. I don't know if you can see his face there. He is not from here, right? It's from up here and it's going like this. And then you get the combination of the TV, which is really only going up to here, right? And you're like, oh, okay, well, you got the, uh, you know, you got the word from production. You're going to have to move really fast. So you just put up this uh, TV gag effect, right? And that's it. It's like, no, there's a whole grip forest around the thing to create this little V so that we have light and then you have dark. Okay, that doesn't just happen on the day. Same here. It's like, well, we didn't, did we need this? Not really, right? Because what are we doing? This is actually, if you think about just locally this setup, this ends up being three different lamps. So it's uh, the prac, which we own, does like that. Overhead, boomed out over the frame here is a light that is washing the backlight of the dog, which is very faint, but that's this pool here is actually being pushed from just overhead. And then because the dog is jet black, then the dog is being filled in from this side. Okay. And that's just to get a little bit of level. And this is where, again, uh, I think I mentioned it in the last video with this dog, with this setup, the thing that you need to do, the only thing you have to remember is or you have to tell the electricians or the gaffer, or the, the best boy, whoever is manning the, you know, the light gun that is hitting just this dog is you have to miss where I can't see. Okay. What that means is you don't want to miss, like say the guy is right here. Whoever's holding this light is right here, blasting it at the dog. You don't want to miss too low because then I'll see the shadow on the ground. You don't want to miss to the right or else then I'll see the shadow to the right. You don't want to, you don't want to miss left right? Or else you're going to see the bleed of the light. If you're going to miss anywhere, miss up and behind this door, right? Like point the light that way. And you're thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense. You don't want him lit that way. Right. I don't really want him lit, but he's just jet black and we need to get a little bit of level on them to separate out from the background. So miss everywhere. Uh, what else is there? TV gag overhead. Yeah. And even with this overhead light, it's like, there's so much stuff up there, shaping it, keeping it off of the, the shears that yeah, it's just a monstrous amount of fluffing around. Now, how do you make the fluffing around work when the brief was minimal as possible? Well, you know from being on commercials that there are always 5,000 objections, especially when you're doing the wide stuff and it's the first shot of a scene where everybody has to be like, oh, do we like that position? Do we like that outfit? Do we like all those things? And that's when you know if you have those seven minutes to actually tweak things, just get everything set up. And then you have seven minutes to tweak everything. It's like, I can always, you can always like, if you didn't like this, you can always just turn it off, right? Worst case, turn off. Uh, best case, we take one of those minutes that we have in the seven minutes to actually mess around while everyone's getting in position and the dog is, you know, uh, having a little snack before we shoot to see whether or not you like it. But if you don't set it up beforehand, you're going to be in serious trouble. Okay, from there, we go around to the dog side, right? This is dog close up. Okay. Oopsies. What did I do there? I gone rogue. Nope. That's the next scene. Here it is. Okay. We go to dog close up. Now you can see I've taken that pool that was on the ground and I've just reversed it. So now we're going to backlight, act like it's coming from this prac that's over here. Again, have this thing in the frame. Why? To create depth. Now this is a question. This is a, this is a point where if we had more time, 
I probably would have made more of this back here. I don't know if you can see it. But this is just a large area of nothingness. It would have been nice to have like another plaque another prac glow in here right prac glow just to break that up because that's what it looks like when you don't have anything breaking it up not to say it's it's not horrendous but you also see like the level it's dark but everything is there this is like almost nothingness uh so we got yeah you got the light that we were using before is the backlight now we shift around and becomes the backlight so we only have to move one stand here, we've, we still have the prac playing a little bit. That's the eye light that you see. Then we have the TV gag light that we were using over there. We've just wheeled it around, and that has become this eye light and all of this, right? So we're just sort of pushing level at him. But what happens is, right, once you know physics, we're pushing a little bit of level this way. We're pushing a little bit of level this way. There's more level coming this way, right? There's more level there. That's why we get the shadow coming this way as opposed to the shadow on the ground that way. And this one, we're missing up if you miss up it's better if you miss down this is what you get that shadow okay if we come back to because i think in order of the shots i think we did here and then because that's the widest that we ever came and we bumped in came down the line here and now you can see like okay well what did we do different here what isn't great about this angle uh well the coverage would dictate that it's a little bit of a bummer that we had the key over here on the wide shot. And now we're, we're pushing the key at him, right? And that sort of flattens things off. That's why this, it's not as nice as the other stuff because we're pushing level at him. What you would notice if you looked at these frames back to back is we've taken all of this stuff, everything up here, way down, way, 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 way down. And then cracks we've got them facing the exact direction that we want with the exact level that we want you can also see the reflections here in everything we've moved the tv light around as much as you can to still cheat it from this direction so trying to get a little bit of an edge on that side uh, and i think so we probably killed this crack and we're only doing it with this up light for this side but this is again a combination of uh, 4300 39 on the camera and 29 on the prax. This is what it looks like. And here, even like, you know, depth, getting the table, also getting the reflection, just looking for those little things as you're there on set trying to find a shot and trying to open up the frame a little bit where you can see under here. It's just like another light to dark little moment that makes it feel a little bit richer. From there, we come over the shoulder. Now, what you'll see over the shoulder is we completely axed that prac light. So now it's TV gag, which is the TV gag is all of this and this, and this is our prac lamp over here, that slightly warmer bit. Uh, and then we just expose for whatever we set the brightness on the, on the actual phone for, but we got rid of all of that prac light. And that's because it's like, okay, we're getting, this shot is going to be on screen for uh, 25, maybe 50 frames. So it's like, nobody's going to remember that there was a prac over here. Just like make this shot interesting. How do you do that? You angle the table way closer. We make a little hot spot on the carpet to have a differentiation between him and the background. Uh, same here. Like you're just looking for these little gaps of different light to dark areas. You play with the, the pillow and then, yeah, we're just backlighting this. I mean, this is the credit card shot. You've seen it 10,000 times by now if you have been around for a little bit on the channel. Okay, then this one is, this would have been done at the exact same time as this. I think we just swapped lenses. So we would have gone from this shot to straight to this one. So just a lens change, really. And that's just for editorial purposes. Like we've kept everything else the same. The only thing you can see here, because we're closer, is that eye light. So that eye light is from the TV gag. But again, we're playing this TV gag. It's been repositioned and it's way down, way, way down as compared to the wide. And we've lost the prac, so the only light coming this side is this. I mean, you can see the shadow on his nose. Is that uh, that hidden movie light that is just out of the frame in the wide shot. So you take a look. Let's find one. Let's go from the wide here. And then you say this one. I mean, did we... I mean, it's pretty much in that world, right? That's the brief. Did we get it? 
I don't know, we didn't go as crazy on the color contrast as this, as blue and as orange, but we played a little bit more this style, I would say. A little bit darker, a little bit more down. Uh, and we got exactly what we needed in the time that we did. And I think this would have been, we probably would have had about an hour to get through this. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, there will be more. In fact, the next video is going to be in this room. Another nighttime scene, but let's make it just a little bit different. Can we do it? <gasps> I think we can. Okay, uh, that's going to do it for this one. Many thanks. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.